Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. This is the 2015 season, the quarterfinal matchup between Amazon, Amazon, and Workday as we continue this series. Now Workday going to be on the blue side here. We're going to hop right into the pick band phase here. We do see the Sejuani band coming out, the Anibia band coming out, and the Scion band coming out. So obviously Sejuani, an infamous jungler at this point for uh, the Amazon team here gonna be an absolute must ban against them But the Anivia and Scion these bands absolutely being switched up from the last game being swapped from two AD carry bands to uh, Simply the Scion and Anivia hoping to ban out the champions that did show up very big for this Amazon team in the last game Whereas we see Amazon gonna be banning out the Vi again gonna be banning out the LeBlanc again and now banning out the Gragas as well showing a little bit of respect here towards that Gragas play uh, that was coming out in the last game and as we can already see some delicious uh, picks coming out here that is going to be Kha'Zix locked in in the jungle oh my goodness I am so excited to see this Kha'Zix play of course Kha'Zix uh, in the most recent patch getting a little bit of tweak here and there around those early heals giving a little bit better sustain in those early jungle routes and now able to uh, really be a threat again as we see the Eve Hover speaking about people who have reasonably or recently been tweaked to get a little bit faster and stronger clears early on. It looks like that Hover is very strong. That is going to be the lock-in of the Eve. And wow, this game all of a sudden exploding. <laughs> going to be a lot of damage coming out from both sides here. And wow, I'm excited to see how explosive this game becomes here. Of course, we are now going to see in the top lane that's going to be singed somebody that is a very uh favored pick here in the top lane a uh, signature champion for this amazon amazon team right now as uh, we very quickly check it out eva skarner all right that's going to be well thank you uh as that is actually going to be a proxy pick coming out not going to be eve that will be a skarner coming out uh, for this uh, Amazon Amazon team instead here. Uh, gonna be a lot more tanky then. Uh, with that cause it's picked up of course Eve going to be a lot more uh, uh, vulnerable than a Skarner would towards those possible assassinations attempts if uh, Kha'Zix decided to go a little bit more aggressive and do some invades of the jungle there actually spot out Eve with some deeper wards there know what camp she's at be able to punish her in the jungle as she is so squishy uh, if she doesn't suddenly appear in a 2v1 position uh, so Skarn are going to be a much stronger pick there as well uh, especially considering if Kha'Zix uh, decides to go a much more uh, uh, all in sort of style with his team composition which it looks like we're going to be seeing with that Annie as well um, he's going to look to try and jump in deep as much as possible, get a lot of assassination damage on that back line. And if Skarner hangs out a little bit more in the middle of the group, uh, instead of just being an absolute frontline tank, if he hangs around sort of the center of the group, he's going to be able to throw down that ultimate immediately on Kha'Zix as he jumps in uh, and prevent him from doing that assassination damage, prevent him from getting to Ballista. Give Callisto a little bit of time to jump away using that passive ability uh, and be able to chunk him out with that Ren stack. So we'll see exactly how that plays out here uh, as we are going to see this remade uh, temporarily here uh, so we can actually get that Skarner pick in as that was of course a uh, proxy pick here. Here we go, back into the game here. We will just keep this as a little bit of an extended intro here for game two, of course. And we're seeing a not the same bands coming out, <laughs> unfortunately. Just the A bands coming out here. Um, having a little bit of fun during this pick band phase. 
Will that R ever remain available? We're not sure. Nobody can ever know. Oh, it's going to be a zero. Zero, of course. The most broken champion of them all. Um, <laughs> so yes, we're going to see that Annie coming out uh, in the mid lane here. Going to be able to have a lot of burst potential. Annie, along with Kha'Zix. The potential here to flash tippers and then have Kha'Zix just dive in and just start picking people off hop from one person to another to another and just start wrecking uh, the squishies in the back line. It's going to rely on a very strong Flash Tibbers uh, if that's what is to happen here. And when I say that, I don't of course mean uh, any support style Flash Tibbers where that is the initial engage. The initial engage is probably going to come from Maokai. It's probably going to come from Thresh. Uh, of course, if it's Thresh, that's more likely to be a pick than rather just an all-out uh, engagement. But if it does come from Maokai, if Thresh does dive into the middle of a team here, Annie is going to be very far back in the back line. So Annie is going to not be able, I mean, let's if we see again, like, a more Boots of Mobility coming out, though Annie much more want to go with the Sorcerer Shoes for that extra penetration. Um, <laughs> she's going to uh, need to get within range, as she does have very limited range on her spells, so that Flash is going to be absolutely critical to have available. So we might see a lot of focus going towards this mid lane uh, in the initial phases of the game here, and especially during that mid game. Forcing Annie to use that flash defensively is going to be an immense pickup for this Amazon Amazon team here on the red side. If they can force that workday flash from Annie, they're going to lose a lot of the follow-up damage that would enable Kha'Zix to start to go insane here. And we'll be interested to see, of course, what evolution path uh, Kha'Zix decides to go with here for this Workday team. Uh, we have seen, of course, the changes uh, right before Kha'Zix started to fall out of flavor uh, that were affecting, influencing some people to go a uh, uh, different evolution path. So we'll try and keep an eye on what exactly Kha'Zix decides to evolve first here. And of course, looking at this uh, from the uh, Amazon Hamazon side of things, Oriana with that Singe, with that Skarner, she has not the strongest ball delivery systems, but both of those champions are very content to just run and take damage. They don't really need to be like Maokai where he gets an invulnerable period of time as the Twisted Advance goes down. They can just run. <laughs> Especially Singe. Uh, with that ghost picked up as well, it, he's going to just be in your team. So there's not, nothing you can do about Singe. He's just going to be in your team poisoning you. So that is what it is. Um, so Oriana, uh, not going to have necessarily a ball delivery system, but is going to have uh, some ball delivery posts set up around the uh, enemy team at any one given point in time. Uh, and we have seen a little bit of flavor transitioning with the use of Oriana, rather than going for the typical ball delivery system, what we've seen is uh, teams uh, in this more tankier meta uh, just having some tanks that can get in the thick of things. And during the middle of a team fight, rather than as an initial wombo start off to the team fight, during the middle of it, the ball just comes out of Oriana uh, to shield somebody who's in the middle of things, gets that ultimate, or is used as a zoning tool for disengagement. Of course. The red side does not have very much disengagement here, aside from the Morgana, of course, with those bindings to slow some people down who are getting a little too close. With the threat of an ultimate, if you engage too hard into that Morgana, uh, there's a lot of potential there. But aside from her, there's not much disengagement here. The rest of it is just uh, minor stuff. The uh, uh, adhesive gunk, whatever that's called, from Cinch. Pardon me, I'm not a Singe player. Um, but uh, the adhesive from Singe is going to be slowing people down. The Skarner is going to be able to slow people down a little bit as well. Especially if we see Skarner go for something like an Iceborne Gauntlet. Something like that to give him even additional slow. Uh, so we'll see exactly what builds uh, come out for these champions here as we load up onto the Rift for, again, what is Game 2. This is do or die here for the Blue side Workday team. We'll see if they're able to force the third matchup here. 
or if they are going to uh, be uh, have their playoff dreams crushed here in the quarterfinals against Amazon Amazon spawning on the red side. see uh, typical starts here coming out from all these champions nothing too unexpected early on of course the uh, pact was taken here I'm uh, about 99% sure that was with Morgana yes it was indeed so a little bit stronger position here they will spawn out but there are some blue members around here gonna throw out more defensive ward over the wall XQ just gonna be a little annoying here I was just opting to start with uh, those uh, spikes. And that is the hook on the Oriana. She's already so low. Forces the flash. Wow, Oriana is so low there. Thrush did hesitate slightly on leveling that hook going for it, but it was absolutely worth it. Oriana, first of all, so close to dying. Sub 100 HP here. Uh, but a free flash. And that is not how this Amazon team wanted to start off game two. Again, especially since we were talking about how critical Annie is going to be with her flash. If she's now an entire flash up in that mid lane, that is going to be a very dangerous situation here coming out for that Oriana. It looks like, in fact, we are going to see a lane swap come out here from this Workday team. They did pick that Jinx, and of course, you know, there we did have a conversation uh, with Workday as well coming into this game. Uh, you know, and I was talking about what, what sort of uh, things they had in mind here. And this was one of the strategies they brought up, uh, was bringing that... Jinx into a 2v1 lane swap scenario uh, to be able to just get a lot of farm on her, accelerate her into the late game as quickly as possible. Uh, and, you know, zoning this uh, singed out very heavily early on is going to make sure that he doesn't get those, that gold uh, to get those items he needs. Uh, it looks like, unfortunately, that Kree's not coming out for this bottom side. It's going to mean that Maokai is able to pick up quite a bit of CS here. Whereas the uh, largely frozen top side. It's going to deny a lot of experience from the Singe. Of course, with that melee range, we're not going to be able to get too much done here. Going to largely be zoned even out of the experience, possibly. And we're seeing, of course, with that uh, stun channeled as well. Oriana just getting with an auto range from Annie. Going to force her to step way back there. Maokai again, hanging around there, getting a little bit uh, of a better start here than this Singe though. Not really as uh, as much as I would have thought, uh, given that they did of course uh, facilitate this lane swap. Oh, but hold that thought because that's a lot of damage. There's the Chompers as well. Singe so low and that's going to be the flash forward for the first blood. On the Jinx, and oh my god, this is exactly what was expected here by this Workday team. Unfortunately, that flash is going to be going insane. There is the Rens, and that is going to be Callista getting it out, uh, out of there, I should say, with herself alive. But there's Kha'Zix here for the counter gank. So much damage, and with that Ignite coming out from Annie, that's going to be enough damage to get a kill. Now, 2-1 to one in kills while all this action happened everywhere on the map here. But, of course, very critically onto that Jinx to get her rolling. This has been something that has worked for Workday in the past. If they can get that Jinx running, if they can get her in a situation, especially where she can get a first blood, she's going to be an absolute monster in this game. Going to be able to ramp even quicker into that late game hyper carry version of herself that we all know and love uh, depending if you're a Jinx player or not. <laughs> but uh, Thrush going to be going on war duty as before we see Skarner coming up to the top lane to try and provide a little bit of relief here. We'll spot out the ward in the tribe rush. 
uh, as Thresh actually going to go on ward duty himself here. We'll spot out that pink ward. Should be able to clear that out without too much problem here. Zani going to be going back. Going to opt to get that second Doran's ring uh, along with the Fiendish Codex here to try and get a little bit of a stronger start on this Orion. Add a little bit of pressure in there. And those are the Flame Chompers coming out again. Unfortunately, it looks like the minions soaked up that zap. Uh, but Thresh looking for more here. Possibly could have landed a hook, but Jinx content to just simply go back to farming there. Not really push her luck there. Going to be enjoying that first blood advantage. Uh, not worry too much about that, of course. Still sitting on only the Doran's blade right now. Hasn't uh, gone back to invest that just yet. Now we see the advantage here coming out for that mid lane again. Annie with that flash down for that first kill, but it was certainly a, a strong investment as she's now seven uh, CS up in addition to that first blood over Oriana. Uh, an absolute terrible situation for her and they're actually opting to send that Morgana top uh, to try and do this uh, 1v1 here in the bottom lane, provide a little bit of relief for that Singe, make it so he actually can get his signature champion here in the top lane farmed up a little bit more to be a threat. Uh, but not able to create too much opportunity here in the bottom lane. You know, again, I was a bit surprised to not see uh, a du double jungle start here uh, as the facilitators of this lane swap. Um, but it seems to have worked out very uh, well uh, at the start, at least, for uh, Maokai, though he did eventually give up that kill. Um, so, and down the CS now, since uh, the Morgana got a little bit of allevi alleviation uh, for the Singed here. Okay, it does fall a little bit behind that, and Kha'Zix uh, gonna be cleaning up that CS. Has three members in the top lane, gonna be enough to zone them away here. That should be the top lane turret going out, first turret of the game. But does that mean there will be a dragon coming out? Uh, we see Callista and Skurner hanging around. They're going to be starting off that dragon, trying to answer. Of course, this is the trade that has to be made early game. Uh, if you see all those members, especially if there's three of them, bringing up uh, the top laner as well to try and get that top lane turned down quickly. Of course, uh, Maokai very content to uh, use that or get that glo uh, local gold from the turret going down. So that will be the first dragon of the game traded for the top lane out of turret over to this red side here. We see a lot of teams very content with making that trade. Uh, and that's reflected, of course, as you can see in that gold disparity right now. A 2.5k uh, gold lead already at 7 and almost 8 minutes into the game. Uh, just so much uh, power can come out of the items that you get from that uh, early gold lead. To see Blue Buff going over to Oriana there. Gonna help her uh, create a lot of power in that mid lane. Deal with that Annie, make sure she doesn't get too far out of control there. And now we see the normal lanes returning here with that top lane having been taken. Excuse me, having been taken, I should say. Uh, back to normal standard lanes here. Morgana keep going just wide of that thrash. And right now, uh, of course, there is that uh, even levels here in these two lanes, or for these two bot laners. Uh, we might see an early level 6 come out for one of these supports and uh, spell a strong engagement here. Of course, both do have flash available. So stepping forward a little bit here, a little bit of poke coming from that Jinx. As we see the Slugfest going on in the top lane as well. That's a lot of damage coming out onto that Kalissa. She is quite low right now. Singed, of course, going for that tier first spin. He's uh, making the most out of that passive armor he gets in. I mean, in this game with uh, a Kha'Zix and a Jinx, certainly going to be helpful to have as much armor as possible. To see Malkai doing his best to farm out this wave in the top lane here. Still has a little bit of uh, sustain with those flash charges. We're going to be looking to go, black, go back soon, pick up that catalyst for a little bit of extra sustain here. 
You see the uh, two ADCs right now. It's very even right now. But there's a Fates Call going to be used to engage, but Kha'Zix goes right in the area, getting a little bit of a jump, a return jump on the ADC, and that will be close to going down first. Jinx with the speed up, going to flash away as well, and that should be enough. Yes, Thresh going to flash play and get the kill. Going to try and give up his life there, and no, actually, that ignite will it be enough? It doesn't look like it will be enough. Kha'Zix gonna just barely make it out by the skin of his teeth. Under 50 hit points, and now here's Annie. There's the flash tippers we talked about all the time during Champ Select, and there it is. Skarner going down as well. The lantern gonna provide a safe passage. Actually, no, there it is. Took a little while there. But eventually that will be Skarner going down as well. And all of a sudden, 6-1, Workday, bringing their A game to this game. Jinx 2-0-2, Annie 2-0-1, and that Kha'Zix rolling with 1-0-2 with that uh, damage enchantment. With those extra long swords built, going to be looking to get a lot of damage coming out here. That's exactly, again, what we were talking about here when we said as long as that Annie has that flash available. Looking to try and dodge out the toss, but that's not going to be enough that Ren will clean her up here. Kha'Zix coming as quickly as he could to try and uh, finish off that Callista to make sure it wasn't a total loss, but unfortunately not going to be the case here as Callista able to jump away, keep herself nice and far, prevent that Kha'Zix from going to him. A minute 30 almost on this dragon. And you see some wards start to come in, start to come out from both these teams around the dragon pit. And that is so much damage onto Kha'Zix from the Orianna. And that is of course an 0-2 Orianna chunking out Kha'Zix that hard. Not even the Athenes completed, but so much damage already. Jinx looking to try and create some pressure onto this bottom turret. This is with Kha'Zix clearing out those wards, doing his jungler thing. And Annie going to be getting herself a little bit of safety as well, clearing out this uh, green ward with that pink in the river. A fairly forward pink ward as well. Uh, perhaps setting up a possible gank in this middle lane here after Kha'Zix goes back. Completes that Brutalizer here. And there's Jinx who is caught by the Morgana Binding, but that will be the Thresh Lantern lasting just long enough to get her out alive. It's a lot of damage coming in to Annie there. Roryana respecting the zoning potential of that Annie. Of course, with her tippers available, the shockwave available as well, so we might see a very explosive moment in the mid lane as uh, Blue Buff gonna be handed over to Oriana here. Singe gonna be doing his best to be that pest that Singe loves to be here. And that's a, another great binding on uh, to Thresh this time from that Morgana. And there's the Fane there, actually going to be pulling in that Kha'Zix as well, going so low, thinking, oh, it's fine. But then all of a sudden the lantern comes out, and there's the Tibbers bringing up CC again. Callista fairly low, uh, or excuse me, fairly healthy, not low, the opposite of low as it were. Um, Kha'Zix, ooh, gonna have to be careful there. Callista looking for some kills here, but Annie gonna roam right back up. Here's the Q coming out from Annie if she can just get in range, and she does. And that will be the very tip of the zap, hitting, picking up another kill on the Jinx. And oh my god, it begins. Unfortunately, Oriana missing the ultimate there as the Twisted Advance came out at the precise moment, but it won't matter in the end. That will be Maokai going down, trying to defend that mid lane turret, but in the meantime, the bot lane turret going down now. Excuse me, 2 and 0 oh in turrets. A gold lead that has erupted um, into four, nearly 5k at this point in favor of this workday team. Certainly not unanswered as, again, that is uh, uh, the first dragon of the game. 
on this Amazon Amazon team here, and they're looking to make that too. They will spot out this dragon here. Kazak looking to contest here, of course, does have that jump available. Comes in, he looks for the smite. Will he get it? No, Skarner does pick it up, but that will be a lantern out. No summoners needed. He will be making it out just fine there. A noble contest here coming from this workaday uh, Kazix, but not going work day, I should say. Uh, Karn, I don't know why I keep saying work a day. I don't know what that's about, but um, regardless, of course, uh, that's going to be a nice rotation over to this mid lane after forcing the hands on away from that successful uh, dragon, but the positioning uh, too strong from this workday team here. Now we'll be Thresh throwing out that hook to try and zone Oriana Lane. Successfully does so as Malkai moves it advances there. And with that assassination damage from the Kha'Zix, that is going to be too much damage. And Annie able to 1v1 Callista as well. And all of a sudden this game getting out of control in favor of this workday team here. They're still looking for more as they linger around this turret here. Malkai quite low right now. Does have to be careful even though he is... Uh, the tanky Maokai we all know and love with that Rod of Ages stacking. Singe looking to try and be annoying, forces the Chompers out of Jinx, but she's going to be able to get in range of this turret. Jinx being the turret destroyer, she is going to chew right through that. And that will be the fourth turret of the game, all going over to this workday team here. 11 and 3, 4 and 0. Oh, the only place they're falling behind is those dragons, of course. 2 and 0 oh right now. That might be the path for salvation for this Amazon team. If they can try and get those uh, that critical third dragon next, give themselves a little extra movement speed, help them with a little bit better positioning here. And so many wards in the jungle. Uh, sweeping out one right as there's another next to you. Not much you can do about that. As we see, of course, Singe hanging out here in this top lane, trying to create a little pressure with that minion wave. But Jinx is going to be able to soak that all up to Jinx, of course. With that Infinity Edge completed, Felissa yet to even finish her first Bloodthirster. Does have the components completed, but hasn't had quite the item break she's needed. Good Q to try and force that Thresh away. And with the mobility, Felissa is going to be just fine. Excuse me, just fine there. As she's able to hop right away. <laughs> you know, this is what we were concerned about seeing from the Amazon Amazon team here. If they do not uh, get that uh, mid-game lead that starts to open them up to a snowball out of control, Will they be able to uh, perform? And it looks like so far, I mean, the answer is not really uh, in their favor. They uh, did fall into a quick deficit early, especially with that Jinx who has just gone insane. Uh, and then Annie, of course, going nuts as well with uh, Kha'Zix being involved in a lot of that early uh, skirmishing. I just created the uh, early game pressure to get things going here. And now that Jinx is so far ahead, she's already looking towards that later hyper game, or hyper carry late game. Once uh, Jinx gets that stride, that's just something that's scary, something you don't want to be around. And with that early Infinity Edge complete, with the sitting on that average ba blade just generating even more and more gold, putting yourself even further ahead as time goes on as she just sits on that looking for picks again in their jungle. This is no longer the Hamazon jungle. This is lit up like a light bright and is absolutely owned by this uh, workday team here. This threat, beautiful twisted advance there. Great chain CC and they will be landing on uh, all that onto this thing. She will deny any assist from the Jinx, but not much else as that will be uh, the first kill of the game for Maokai. Now in a 4v5 situation here, all these members forced up to the top lane to try and defend this turret, leaving Annie alone to shove in that bottom lane. 
not the best split pusher around, but certainly able to bring those uh, minions to the turret very quickly with all that AoE. There's Kha'Zix going to be jumping in using that isolation to create a lot of damage. Unfortunately, the Jinx rocket going a little wide there, thinking that Morgana was going to walk uh, rather than just flash over the wall there, but a good attempt, and that does force them off the turret. Unfortunately, it looks like their rotation's not really able to find anything at this point. Oh, and there's the Timbers coming out. Unfortunately, does not get what she needs getting onto that Oriana, but... Again, with a lot of pressure here, she is going to be able to... Uh, create an opportunity to get this turret. There's the Oriana ultimate missing as well. And now that will be the turret going down. Five to zero. Only one inner turret standing for this Amazon team right now. And the dragon coming up in now about ten seconds. That's going to be the scuttlecraft into the dragon. And that should be the first dragon of the game going over to this workday team here. Preventing that third dragon from this Amazon team is going to be absolutely critical at this stage in the game. Here comes Kalissa though, as that dragon does uh, get caught up here. Going to be off and back. Not going to jive too deep. And of course, with that Bloodthirster completed. Gets herself a little extra uh, defensive capabilities. Now we see, of course, that shift completed though for Jinx so far ahead of Kalista at this stage in the game, despite uh, I mean, despite having uh, a slightly less CS overall. Those kills and those assists, the participation in these team fights, absolutely uh, creating an enormous deficit that. I mean, it's reflected in the overall gold here. If we look at the gold, it's over 8k gold lead in favor of this Workday team. I've certainly seen games uh, that have come back from this, uh, that have come back from a deficit much higher than this even. So I certainly wouldn't put it past uh, a, a, a possible comeback, especially from Amazon. You know, being true to their name, of course, all it takes is them going a little extra hand here. But that's a lot of damage coming out onto Kha'Zix. So squishy, of course, does now have that Hex Drinker built so he can uh, deal with a lot of that damage coming from Oriana. Of course, Singed as well, bringing a lot of damage to the table. Morgana, not a negligible amount of damage. Looks like the Siege, trying to get this out, uh, you know, I'm going to have to not go all in on it. I'm just going to let the Amazon team here clear this out. That uh, middle lane is pushing, so they're looking to try and catch them out in a rotation in their jungle as they respond to this mid lane push. Not going to be able to do so. The Thresh, good hook there, but it does get sidestepped. Very tense moment here again. Nearly a 10k gold lead right now. 9k gold ahead is this work day team. <laughs> so many words. Absolutely not going to let that pink word get away. Uh, and here again, here comes the rotation from this work day team back up to the top lane here. With that pressure created in the mid lane. So just looking for any opportunity to get some damage in onto these hurts and of course. Pushing that in as much as possible and Morgana trying to respond to alleviate that pressure if she can. Beautiful cue from Morgana. That's going to be the flash ultimate from Skarner. And he pulled in, but there's the Timbers. Gets Morgana on the way out. And that's a one for one so far. That is an ultimate, but it's on the two of the less important members, neither of the Squishies. And just going to make it out alive is Maokai. And that will be Singe going down a two for one overall in favor of this workday team. Now 10 uh, kills in the lead right now. There's a 
lot of damage actually coming out of that. I haven't even used the phases amount of active as well. Very confident uh, is that Maokai. Just trying to buy as much time for Jinx as possible to let her wail away on that turret. Which again, we can't emphasize enough here that as, despite what looks like the story of the game, the 10 kill disparity here in favor of this workday team, the true story comes down to the turrets. 6 to 0. All the inner turrets down now. The base barely left uncompromised by this, uh, for the Amazon Amazon team here. The dragon coming up here in about a minute. We'll see if uh, this is something that Amazon Amazon can contest. They are still so far behind at this point, I believe. Plus, is sitting on a very significant amount of gold at this point in the game, and she is. Uh, but the rest of the members fairly recently spending that gold out. Oriana opting to go for those boots of lucidity uh, again. A little more interesting of a choice there, not going for the extra penetration, just wanting to give those abilities out, be able to uh, get those uh, cooldowns so she can reposition. That ball to try and get that ultimate as opportune as possible here. So let's see. Actually caught out as Oriana. Hold that thought here. We're going to have to jump back just to see that. Oriana does make it out. Of course, with the Jinx target, not going to connect. But I do want to see how this starts out here. Oriana seemingly in a safe place. No, there actually is a ward right there. And that is the Flash Tivers. A lot of damage and the Ignite. Everything thrown out. The shield just barely going to keep her alive. Some hundred hit points right now. And the Jinx ultimate not doing anything really. Hitting the full health team here. Now uh, we'll force the Oriana back, but she will be able to do so and just head up to that top lane to prevent Maokai from getting too much done. However, that will spell the Dragon going over to this Workday team, evening up that score 2-2 two to two now. That Dragon is absolutely nuts. Amazon dancing around the borders of their base so careful right now. Absolutely how they need to be to prevent uh, anything from going wrong here. We see, of course, Kha'Zix uh, going back now. Going to be able to uh, complete up some items. I do believe actually no going to opt to just head on back out to base here. Or out to the field. Alright, starting to Transition to that tank here, uh, more survivable role so when he can dive in. Still has a lot of damage, of course. Uh, Brutalizer, Hex Drinker, uh, AD Jungle item. Nothing uh, to, uh, you know, not take lightly. <laughs> I mean, the all the armor penetration coming out from him is so much. Hold on, that actually goes taken down is Andy. That's absolutely what they need to see. Uh, Garner going in trying to find him, but he does end up finding uh, perhaps somebody he wasn't necessarily totally looking for uh, in that Kha'Zix, but there is the reset from a lot of that damage coming out, able to hop back away, Skarner very, or excuse me, Kha'Zix very low, but that damage is going to be both of them falling down, and that will be the ACS yes, coming out for this Workday team, and now what will they seek to go for at this point? Four members are available. and he respawning right now. Looks like they're going to opt to go for the Baron. The whole four members are going to be a lot of damage coming up. Still goes fairly slow at this point in the game. But that will be enough damage consistently to get this out. And that is the Baron going over to this workday team here. Now perhaps with the Baron buff on them, they will be able to uh, 
crack into the base now, finally break that inhibitor turret line, and push this game out of contesting range for Amazon Amazon here again. This is absolutely a dominant game here, but this is not as much that it was a dominant game as it was a capitalization on the vulnerable stages for Amazon, of course. Not a team that never gets behind in the early game, but just a team that always comes back and spirals out of control during the mid game. So absolutely making use of that. Uh, picking a team that is able to spiral out of control in the early game themselves, of course, getting Jinx uh, ahead in her build enough to where she can uh, hit that later game sooner can become that huge threat sooner, getting Kha'Zix fed to where he can absolutely snowball all these lanes, create tons of kill opportunities, and then Annie, putting Annie ahead, something you never want to see uh, if you're up against that Annie. And now, of course, looking to complete that Void Staff on our next back for a little extra penetration as well. Now there is going to be a lot of minions with them right now. We'll see if they're able to defend this turret. That's actually Malkai going to be go going on in with a twisted advance. And Callista going to be going down here. And that will be Singe going down as well. Morgana down as well. And that's the full ace only. Annie lost for that. And that's got to be the game here. Going over to work day. As we see the GG's coming out. The inhibitor is going down. Yes, that certainly will be the game right now. Absolutely impressive game two here from Workday. We are going to be heading on to game three of this quarterfinal matchup here. Who will advance to the semifinals? We'll find out in game three here. But goodness gracious, again, let's take a moment to analyze exactly what happened here. This is just exactly what Workday needs to do. They need to find an opportunity for themselves to get ahead early and spiral in the mid game. If they find a ch composition like this that can pull that off, they're definitely going to be able to capitalize on what seems to be Amazon's only moment of weakness, which is that they can fall a bit behind in the early game and they need that mid game comeback. They need that mid game series of kills to get themselves ahead and that becomes the style of game they're used to playing. They're used to playing a game once they hit the later mid game where they have created enough opportunities to themselves where they can go a little bit more aggressive, capitalize on that uh, early advantage they've built, um, or slight advantage they've built, I should say, and then go out of control themselves. But if they can stem that, the play style of Hamzon will work against them, and that's exactly what happened in this game, where Kha'Zix, again, 8-0-6, Jinx, 6-0-10. This is exactly what they wanted to see coming out of this Workday team. Get that Jinx, get her uh, snowballing ahead, get a champion in the jungle that can create opportunities for the rest of the teams. I mean, Annie, 4-4-6. Four, four, doesn't seem super impressive, but when we look at the damage totals, second most damage for her team over an Assassin Kha'Zix who went insane. She put out enormous amounts of damage throughout the game. More, I believe, yes, more than any member on the Hamzon team uh, at all. So, a very solid game here. And I think in game two at the start of this game, we didn't see any changes in the pick bands. Uh, or excuse me, from the bands coming out of Amazon, Amazon. I think after this game, we're definitely going to see some swapping of the bands here. Because that Kha'Zix cannot be allowed to uh, fall into the hands uh, of this Workday team again. Otherwise, we might very well see just a repeat of this game. Uh, and, I mean, well, I'm very interested in what's going to be happening here. So, without further ado, let's hop into Game 3, the final match of this quarterfinal series, of course. Stay tuned to After Hours Gaming League at the website displayed on your uh, screen, afterhoursgaming.tv, to keep up with all the schedules. See what pairings are coming up next week in the quarterfinal, the semifinals, I should say, uh, after we finish off all our games here. Uh, but without further ado, we will be hopping in to the next game. So for all you lovely streamers, stay tuned. And for everyone else, 
I will see you in game two, or excuse me, in game three.